Today we're going to go over finishing enclosures with epoxy. So here we have the enclosures that I'm going to be working on this weekend. Um, the first thing we need to do is actually cover all the holes with tape. I've tried doing this in other ways. I have used plugs in the holes, but the epoxy happens to pull up against it, which leaves a divot next to the hole and actually a little volcano right at the edge. And I've tried to let it pour through the hole, but again, it kind of runs over and you watch the epoxy dip before it actually goes through. And I find that if I put tape over the holes and just fill them up with a epoxy, I get the nicest finish on the pedal where everything's nice and flat after I drill them back out. So here I'm showing what it looks like. I'll end up going over and cleaning up the surface you know, before I go and actually put the epoxy on, because whatever is on there, once the epoxy goes on, it is what's going to be there. I like to use electrical tape. It seals around the hole really, really well. It does not allow the epoxy to drip out. I've had it actually leak under like painter's tape, so I find this to be best. I also like that it keeps a nice, flat, smooth finish. So as I'm showing, we're going to finish the rest of them off screen because it just takes way too long. So I was checking out the pedals. This is one of my favorites. I've never actually done um, Sharpie drawing on a pedal before. So I'm really interested to see how this turns out. I'm worried that the Sharpie might actually get wiped away by the, uh, by the epoxy. All the rest of them are acrylic paint pens and I know they'll work really, really well. So I'm looking forward to doing all of these. The ones I'm gonna start with are the two in the upper left the uh, despair pedal and my off the rails that's an oc2 clone by pedal pcb and a derailleur so here i'm showing you i use the envirotex light pour on epoxy it works really really well i get it from amazon it's not too expensive here i'm showing that we have the hardener and the resin it's a 50 50 mix by volume I uh, like to use the four ounce solo cups. That is a silicon steer stick I got from uh, Let's Resin. And I use a one tablespoon measuring you know, spoon. Uh, and I do an even pour of one tablespoon of each. A tablespoon of the hardener, a tablespoon of the resin, and stir it up and it works really, really well. I did make a mistake once and took both caps off, pour, you know, measured everything out, put it back together, put the caps back on the wrong bottles, which almost sealed them up. On the right, that little thing with the red cover, that is isopropyl alcohol, which works really well for cleaning off the resin. It's the only thing I've found that while the resin is still in a liquid form, will actually clean the resin off really well. So here I just make sure that the top of the pedal is nice and clean. It's the one we're gonna start with. I like to pour the resin first uh, because it's, actually I like to, uh, no, it's the resin first. I like to go with the resin first, it's a little bit thicker and then I use the hardener which is a thinner thing. One thing you can do is you can actually heat them up. Uh, you can take the bottles, stick them in a bigger, like a tub of warm water, let them heat. Uh, this helps with a couple of things. It'll help with getting the bubbles out of the resin because you'll see when I mix it together, that a lot of bubbles form inside of the, you know, in, in my little stir cup there when we're stirring it up. Because we're doing a pour resin, it's not that bad because, you know, it doesn't have a large surface to come up from, but it's still, you know, a concern that you might have bubbles. You might not have a perfect crystal clear finish. So I put in my resin, as you see, I'm going to put in a spoonful of hardener. Um, I like to make sure everything's clean because things will seal up. You know, this, this does work really well that way. So I'll get the cap on that. And we'll get the hardener going. And as I said, that, that tablespoon, I usually, well, I was only getting two petals out of it. This time I happened to be able to get four done. So I think I'm just getting better at spreading them out and I'm not putting it on as thick. Um, 
it's really key to, and it takes a while to figure out exactly how much you want to put on. I only do the tops of my pedals. I don't do the sides, you know, all the way around. I don't let it go all the way over and drip down. It's just, oh, well, I don't like to use that much resin either. So that would leave a lot extra in order to get a nice thing. And since I've already drilled the holes on the sides, you know, those, it doesn't, go around those holes really really well so here i stir it up you want to stir it for almost a minute i try to just make sure that i'm you know stir thoroughly because it is such a tiny cup i mean they, they tell you, you want to do a minute then you want to pour it into a new cup and do another minute but they're talking about full cups of resin where you're looking at doing you know 32 ounces or 16 ounces at once we've got not even two ounces of resin in here so I just stir it vigorously for about a minute. I make sure I scrape the sides. I try to make sure I get the whole bottom. I, uh, I wipe off my stick a couple of times. And once I'm done, I try to let it sit. Uh, in the future, I would like to get a, a vacuum tank to actually pull all the bubbles up so it's crystal clear. That way I don't start out with as many. But you can see how it's starting to get kind of milky and white looking and this is because of all the resin that's in it i pick it up and kind of show you you can see that there's a bunch of bubbles in there and they'll end up rising up to the surface we can let it sit there and let it rise up a little bit more i'm impatient and since like i said it's a very thin layer um i don't worry and that is my torch so after we put everything on that's a nice way to pop the bubbles and get a nice smooth surface another thing you want to make sure of is that you don't have a lot of things that can drop into it so here i'm feeling like it's good enough you know you can see there's still tons of bubbles but i'm not going to wait so i show i fill up the holes first i feel this helps so i i know where i'm you know at a level surface after I filled up the holes, and I, you can see I just do a little at a time, I try to make uh, a line of resin around the edge so I know where my edges are. And then I'll go and I'll try to fill in the middle. That way I have a nice surface to work with and I can hopefully, you know, get everything spread out. You can always add more. It's really hard to take resin off if you put too much on. So once I think I have enough resin, I'll start trying to move it towards the edge. Um, at first, you see, I'm, I'm kind of just moving it to make sure I get all the, the gaps in the top. You know, I, I'm making sure I can, I can cover the whole surface. Once I'm sure I can cover the surface, I start at a corner and I just start working along the edge, pulling the resin right to the edge of the pedal. I try not to go over the edge because then it'll drip and I'll rotate it as I go. Some things you need to be careful of is uh, if you're getting resin on your fingers and you go to use your fingers to turn, you'll get little resin fingerprints on the side of the pedals. I've done it many times. Um, and that's why the isopropyl alcohol, take a paper towel, dip it in, uh, in the isopropyl alcohol, wipe the down the sides of the pedal and that'll work. So as you can see here, I just continue to work my way around the edge I'm really trying to get the entire uh, surface covered. Once I think I'm done, I kind of give it a nice look. And I think I'm, oh, maybe I am seeing, nope. I'm seeing some spots where I need to get a little bit more. So it's also good to have a nice light. Um, I would get a flashlight or a nice, you know, set of LED lights. There's not enough light on it right now. You'll see I go over it later with the light to get a good look because you wanna make sure you've got a nice edge all the way around those edges. And you can see how shiny it is right there. I mean, it reflects everything once you do that up. I've also used this to fix up, uh, like where I've sprayed acrylic paint on it and you know, uh, uh, an acrylic clear coat and it, I didn't do it right. So it just cracked like crazy. I put this on after that, it just fills in all the cracks. You don't see them and you have this beautiful surface going the other things to make sure of is make sure your surface is perfectly level because this is self-leveling epoxy so if your surface is at an angle the epoxy will pull to that edge and and 
you know, kind of go over it. So you want to make sure that everything's level. I actually turn my pedals, you know, each time I check on them to make sure that I'm not having it tilt to one edge or another or one corner of another of the pedal. So I've got one done. Once you're done with the pedal, you want to make sure you cover it. So I've got a bunch of plastic covers that I like to use. I'll go and I'll put it off to the side. I'll put my plastic cover over it and then I'll start on my next pedal and get that ready to go. See, I'm still trying to make sure I'm right up at the edge of this pedal so I get a good finish. And this one actually did. I like the way this one came out. Um, sometimes I get little drips over the side. I'll show you cleaning those up a little bit later. Um, but then again, I don't expect everything to be perfect. So like I said, the cover's there to keep all the dust out, little bugs out, like anything that gets into it's gonna show up. My hair's kinda long. You know, if I get a hair in there, you know, if I don't realize it soon enough and I pull it out too late, you know, it might make marks in the, the resin coating that you'll see. So here I'm really kind of curious. I'm gonna be very careful with this one because I really don't want to have the resin um, mar the surface. Like I, I really wanted to clean it up to make it super white, but I found that it really doesn't work with this, with the, the Sharpie. The Sharpie, if I start rubbing it with my thumb, even though it's supposed to be a permanent magic marker, will start to rub and smear all over the place. So. When I do this one, I want to make sure that I get a nice coverage on it and that I don't like go through and start wiping the surface of the, the pedal itself because I don't want to pull any of that away. But you'll see, you know, even just getting a little bit of that on there, it kind of brings it out a little bit more. And, and the process, again, I'm just trying to work it up to that edge so that it sits on the edge and does not go over. Uh, the tensile strength, well not tensile strength, the uh, uh, the viscosity, it's very thick. So it, it's like water, how you can get it to, you know, come up over the edge of a glass without it actually starting to spill out. So you can actually just do the top of the pedals and that's what I try to do with mine. Um, they're already powder coated. I don't have any art on the side. So I really, I'm just wanting to protect the art from from anything that gets onto it. Another nice thing about the resin is that you can, you know, try and buff it if anything happens. Um, I'm sure you've, well, you can watch online, you can see videos of people making resin art where they make things and then they buff them up to a high shine. So you're actually able to do that in case you get scratches and whatnot. You could also put other layers. Um, some things to be concerned about with resin is it does make the, the thickness of your petal considerably more you know you're you're adding a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch of of thickness to the top so if you're barely catching the threads on something before you put the epoxy on you're not going to catch the threads at all after and there you see I got a little spill over the side and I wiped it up so we're gonna finish this one up I like the way that looks. Yeah, I'm just trying to get it to go. I'll keep a little bit of the my mumbling through this in the background, but the reason why I'm doing the voiceover is I was uh I was watching WandaVision while I was doing this and talking through it, figuring I would do a voiceover and I really don't want to have the WandaVision running through the background while I you know while while I'm talking through this. The last half of the video, when we when we check on everything, you'll you'll see uh, we go over and do. So I feel like that one's done. I'm turning it like that because I'm checking the edges. I'm looking at its reflection. My uh, front windows, my front door is right to the in front of me where I'm where I'm working on stuff, so I can see the reflections, and I'm making sure that I get a nice edge all the way around on the pedal. I still have enough epoxy left. I thought I could only get two surprisingly on this one i'm gonna get a lot more and a lot of it has to do with how many uh holes you have as well less holes means less you know filling that you're actually going to do so this here is a mad bean pedal uh, it's the it's the copy of the the phase 90. um it's got the little switch 
you can see I kind of went over the edge again and I really shouldn't be cleaning it up with my fingers I should be wearing some kind of plastic gloves but you know if you clean it up afterwards you should be fine it does the other reason why I shouldn't be using my fingers is that it gets the resin on it and when I go to turn things I'm gonna make resin spots on it this pedal I was watching people do uh, I was watching them do a bunch of painting online and I was watching somebody do uh, the mandalas with I think that's how you say it mandalas with uh, with acrylic paint and since I have the paint pens and I like to paint with the paint pens most often I thought I'd give it a shot and see how it came out so I started just doing one on there I figure I love phasers I like the way they sound I think they're pretty so I figured I'd just make something pretty um, since it's a one knob phaser with a, a, a push button to change the tonality a little bit I didn't think it was important to label the, the controls I often don't label my controls because it just doesn't go with the art uh, as you can see with the octave I didn't label the controls but the upper two is octave one and two and then the middle ones the blend for the dry you know I, I figure I'll put it on the inside of the pedal so people know or I'll write it up if someone wants to purchase it or if I'll even sell it I've, I've been building these figuring I'll sell them but I have not sold any I have a hard time letting things go but I'll need to get rid of some at some point because I have well over 100 now and I can't use them all so as you can see I have a ton left I figure I'll do this one um, this is the another mad bean pedals this is uh it's something rabbit i can't remember which rabbit it is but it's a copy of the big muff um it's one of the ones where you could do any of the muff pedals so i did the green russian since i already have a wicker um i think i had already done another one that was a muff uh, a normal muff i don't think i have an op amp yet but the green russian has always interested me this is the um this is the army green enclosure you know 125b enclosure from tata which i really like the color of this matte enclosure is just perfect for that army green but as you can see i didn't know what to do for the artwork on this and i was just like thinking to myself oh, meh pie <laughs> i hear cartman meh pie so that's what i did with that one i like it i think it's cute I was going to do like try to do the hammer and sickle or like maybe do a tank but eh, meh. Pie. I was feeling meh that day anyway so again as you see you can kind of tell on this one which is nice about the mat is you can see how I just bring it right up to the edge bring it around and you watch them I mean look at the uh, look at a phaser I mean it's completely leveled itself out it's nice and perfectly flat I mean so is that one already already getting itself nice and flat so I'll put those over in the middle. I'm getting ready to cover them. Before I cover them, I think I'm going to actually get out the the torch and go over it. I think if you can tell in the lower right of the 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 green Russian muff, there's a little bit of bubbles in there. And when you go over it with that flame on the torch, it just it gets rid of them instantly. And it works really well. And you can do it over and over again, you know, as as they're curing you can go and I typically check on them about every 15 minutes to a half hour to check for drips to check and see if more bubbles have come to the surface you know I like to to make sure things are going well because you can you can fix them while they're still in liquid form and for about two hours afterwards they'll, they'll still run a little bit and you'll be able to wipe up the sides and everything else after two hours they're starting to get set and what you'll want to do is you'll want to let them sit for a full day before you can really leave them uncovered and two days before you really want to handle them after a day you can leave them uncovered but if you do touch the top with your finger like actually grab it you can leave fingerprints and those fingerprints are going to stay there so i try to make sure it's a good 24 hours before i actually or not 24 48 hours before i wipe them down and i try to wait 72 before i drill the holes back out but I don't often get there. So we're gonna do the rest of them and I'm pretty sure I'm going to come back and start talking about some other things. Um, I explain it here where you need to cover them so nothing gets into them. You know, 
flakes, anything. I mean, everything's going to get in there. You would be surprised. These will let you know how much, you know, skin flakes. If you have a little dandruff, dry hair, and you know, it's going to get in there. If you have a dusty room, they'll end up on, on the top. So you're going to want to make sure you keep them covered and you want to be careful around them before you get it done. Um, like I said, I like these little things. Those are from uh, Turkish Peppers. They're, if, if people don't like black licorice, but they're like hard black licorice candies with sea salt in the middle. I love them. I don't know if other people do. But they're, the buckets that they come in are perfect for two petals. You know, it's nice, nice and high. So I got them all covered. Uh, as you see, Clyde's over in the lower right. Got my little ball in the lower left. I use those just so I know when I'm working on the surface where the bounds of my camera are. Um, sometimes I actually also uh, try to keep the pedals up a little bit so that if they do drift, it doesn't set them to the surface. <coughs> also, um, these are silicon mats that I'm working with it on that I got from Amazon. I love these for this work because I can leave the drips on there and I can pull it off later and it works really, really well. So we'll come back to this after we get done, you know, getting the rest of them finished and I'll show you how I check on them and make sure everything works okay. And I don't know what I'm still working on or what we're waiting for. We'll get there someday. Oh, all right. So this is what I was saying. So you can see with the light, you can really see what it looks like. So I'm, I'm trying to check everything. Yep, there you go. See, I had some bubbles in the lower right. So this is why you want a really good light. I was probably running to go get it because I don't always have everything I need right there. So it's important to have a light, some kind of flashlight so you could go over everything that you're doing. I take a second look at the ones over there on the left. You know, and I'm actually noticing here, and I comment on it, although I don't know if you can see it, but the epoxy did change the way the 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 pen looked. It, it changed the way the Sharpie looked on there. It, 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 like, thinned it out a little bit, you know, where it wasn't such solid black lines. But, you know, when you see the finished product, you can decide if you like the way it looks. I can't see bubbles, but I feel there's no harm in going over it with the... Uh, with the torch another time just to make sure they are all popped and here i'll get back to me we put the covers over them so that we don't get anything and i got a drip on the black one and a drip on the red one all right so we're going to put a cover back on that we'll try to wipe those up how bad is that doing it's dripped all down the side right there you can see it kind of pulling up Drip down that side too, but the white one's doing great. And these two, I believe, are doing excellent. I have seen no drips on them at all. Very happy with the way those are coming. Um, this is my afterthought, and very nice. All right, what I have right in front of me here, which is you barely see, this is isopropyl alcohol. It is the one thing that I can actually use to clean off the petals. All right, I'm now going to relocate this one. because I think it's actually doing fine. I don't think it's, we're gonna drip again. I don't want it out of the way. So I'm gonna set it there. There we go. All right. These two, which are the two that are doing the worst. Ah, see, totally sticking. All right, so this is what I can use to try and clean off any drips. So this, the drips only went down. No, oh, and that's it. All right, and we're gonna actually move it to a clean spot because I think that some of the stuff I saw around the bottom well, is not drips. It's just dirt. All right. So all I'm doing is 
wipe it around. Um, that's what I do to get the bulk of it off. Um, there we go. All right. Those are perfect. These had two arrows. All right. So I believe it was the black. As I said, you see that? No, I don't know if you can. But there's a drip right here. We don't go out. All right. So. The part is not left for you? No. Does anybody else right here? Yes. Yeah. Me. Yeah. Yeah. He loves his own music. Yes. What's your favorite role? It's kind of like a shake. A shake. I don't know. Just do whatever the music tells you. There's nothing but douchebags at these clubs. I love well, it. Come on. Yeah. You just sit here all day and smoke weed and jerk each other off. Yeah. That sounds amazing. This one's got a little one right there. So we're going to try to grab it off. I mean, right? Oh my God. I had, I had chlamydia. It's true. And you introduced me to the girl that gave me chlamydia, so you basically gave me chlamydia. You doesn't have insurance, you can't get the best. You did? You know, I got a mess. All right. So that's it. All right. I think that's good. So, let's get two circuits. There. All right. So we finished off the rest of them already. Um, I just wanted to get them done so I didn't wait to record how I actually finish it off, how, how I get to the end point. <clears throat> so the two we're going to work on is uh, this will be the pedal PCB Ocelot, which is a copy of the Boss OC2 Octaver, so two octaves and a dry that you can blend together. Um, this is going to be my copy here of the, uh, oh, I forget what it is. It's a copy of the train wreck amp that TWE one, how to can, oh, ethos. That's it. Ethos pedals did the TWE one. So that's what this is a copy of. It's the derailer by pedal PCB. Um, so these are the two that I want to finish up here. Um, as you see, I've got my tools. This is just a little case I put together. I use the, um, I use a combination. So these are all, uh, as you can tell, just deep sockets of the sizes needed for pedals. So they're switches, um, potentiometers, the output jacks, power jack, and uh, the stomp. Uh, these are for some other ones that are odd sizes. So some of my uh, output jacks are a little different. And sometimes if you have the rotaries, uh, they use a different size than just the regular potentiometer. So I've got them in here. I also use it to hold my drill bits. Um, this one I don't use very often because I usually don't have to make holes this big. Uh, this one I do. I've been using this one for 100 pedals now. Um, still sharp, still works fine. Um, got it from Home Depot. Uh, I forgot which brand, but I'll figure that out and put it up at some point. It's number one, USA, blah, blah, blah. Oh, there it is. It's Milwaukee. I was very happy with this. That works really well. Um, then I have two other drill bits that I use. That's an eighth inch, and I believe this is a sixteenth. Um, these are for doing my pilot holes. As you can tell, I have tape. So my tape are my bump stops um, because I don't have a drill press right now and probably won't for the near future. So I use these to, to make my holes. So as you see, I've already taken the tape off of this one, but the holes are still plugged with um, epoxy. This one, I've still got the tape on. So the tape holds it because when you use the tape for the epoxy, you see I've got a nice flat finish over the top of that, which, you know, and it's shiny. So it works really well. If I've tried two other ways. One is if you don't put it on, and two is I've tried to put a plug that actually sticks up. Um, plugs the epoxy actually pulls up against the side and you have these little like volcanoes everywhere you have it with a dip going into them, which is really strange. So like here it'll be level and it'll dip down and then pull up against it. Um, and if you just leave the hole, you've just got the, you know, you've got this round off into each one of them and you still have to drill them out a little to have epoxy all over the outside. So I find it easier just to drill the epoxy back out. Um, and that's what we're going to do here. That's why I got my handy dandy little drill. Um, 
and we're going to get to work on these. So first things first, we'll just take the, the tape off of this one. So this is just your standard electrical tape. I like that best. It seems to make a really nice seal. Um, painter's tape sometimes allows it to leak and doesn't really push up against the bottom. Um, it also leaves a bit more of a texture on the the epoxy itself, although that doesn't matter because we're not leaving it there. Although if you're ever going to do any kind of windows or something, you want to make sure you've got something super smooth up against the epoxy. But I like the way this tape works. It's not expensive, so I can just kind of do it and then toss it out afterwards. So now at this point, we need to drill these holes out. So we want to be really careful doing that because one, if we start from the front, we don't want to slip. Um, if we start from the back, we don't want to push too hard because pushing too hard will actually help lift the epoxy away from the surrounding area. And I think I, I was really careful because in the past I'd done it. And you'll just see a little, you'll see a little clear area behind, you know, where you can tell that it's not sealed right up against the, the surface in the paint. Oops. The other thing I found interesting, so if you look at this, there are a few spots. I don't know if you can tell. I think we can get them to shine at some point where I got like fingerprints on the edge here. Um, it's a little dripped over here. You can see this is slightly dripped over. Uh, let's see if I can get that to focus close. No, it just doesn't want to, but that's fine. Uh, this is a little bit over the edge and then it's pulled up. So it's not an exact science. It's actually very hard and I don't have the patience to be super, super um on top of it but i mean this is just putting it on top letting it sit there and then uh wiping up anything that comes over the edge and you get this super hard uh surface here that you can you know polish up the the big thing is like i've got some flakes of dust and stuff in here that it's not exactly perfect and it never is you know, with the fact that I have one room that I have to do all my living in, which is why they were covered, is because things will get in there. Um, I've got semi-long hair, uh, so if a stray hair gets into it, that's always a real pain in the neck, so you got to want to get it out before it starts to set. So the epoxy is super, um, it's easy to drill. Like, you see it, it marks up quite easily. Um, and we need to drill it out and we can be a little easy and a little rough with it both at the same time. So what I'm going to do, and you can see I've got little shavings all over the place. And to prevent us from having an absolute mess, I have just a little Tupperware that I like to put them into when I'm going to do this. Um, that way it'll catch all the shavings for me. Uh, there we go. I like to do mine all the same way I do the metal part uh, because I like to be able to concentrate. So I put the little 16th on and this way I have, oh man, it's gonna be hard. A little room for error. All right, maybe I won't, oh, maybe I will, hold on. Let me either do it the way I feel comfortable doing it, so. Ooh, that almost came off. This is not working well. All right, screw it. We're gonna make a mess. Don't like the bucket gets in my way. And I need to be able to get in and make sure these are straight up and down. And uh, let's do them from here. That way if they do, See, I'm not always 100% on how I want to do stuff. I'm actually going to. Got a hole. 
This I can't see. And this one I can't see either. All right. So we've gotten through. Make sure I didn't mess my surface up. I don't want any scratches, even though it's not always perfect. All right. So that's good. So you see, we've got our pilot holes. We're going to do them for both pedals. And you can do them from either side. Um, you just have to be more careful with some than others. So like this one, uh, straight from the top. quiet but I want to make sure I concentrate because I do want to not get them all janked up so that's our our initial holes I like to have those just so I'm not I know that the next bits aren't going to squirrel around although I still do have to be careful here because it's not exactly going it doesn't stay super easy in that spot and I like to go slow um like I said the epoxy is really easy so we have no need of actually, you know, needing the high speed to drill through. And if we go nice and slow, we're more controlled and we're less likely to slip up and scratch the outside. Now it is possible to polish this up, but it's very difficult. And I don't feel like you get this, this gloss shine if that so happens. So we've got that one done. We'll go to here. And like I did really shitty on this one to get my, my holes. I do want my holes kind of in the center. And I find personally this part the final steps to be the most nerve wracking because I mean, you've already spent all that time with art. Then you spent all that time trying to get your surface covered that to mess up. See, I'm not going through the hole. So I'm trying to keep this centered. So you see how much longer it takes if you're not going straight into where that pilot is and that pilot goes through much easier there we go which is why we make the pilot it makes the the bigger work a little easier and you have more room for error making that that pilot hole so for the final step you stick on your uh there it goes I get on the step bit. So the step bit has all the steps in order to get to the right size. And what I want to do is I really want to work from the inside because, oh, um, I didn't do the, uh, the LED. And I really rather do that with the uh, regular drill bit. Although it has to go from the inside as well. So. The reason why we go for the inside is because this drill is so much easier through the epoxy than through metal. We let the actual metal original drilling guide where it's going because it'll actually shift your bit from side to side to drill out the rest um, of the epoxy without drilling into the metal. You do have to be careful. Um, if you're forcing or if, you're, if you've got it spinning too fast, it will drill into the metal. Um, you also don't want to push too hard. So I'm just kind of slowly letting it go in. And some of it is by feel. So I'm, I'm like making sure I don't feel it up against the, uh, the metal. Because it is a different feeling you'll get. 
you still want to make sure you go as straight as you can. Um, and I'll show you as soon as I get the rest of them started. And I'll and I will say started because the holes aren't complete. And we'll see if I actually um, push too hard. Because you still have to go through. All right. So you see how we're, we're collecting up all the scraps. So if we look at this now, you'll see that the holes are not perfect. You know, we're not 100% into them. They're still kind of a little bit left around the edges on a bunch of them. And we finished them off from the front. Um, I don't think I did. Got a little bit on this one. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little bit of pull away right up against that edge. So that's why you want to be very careful. That'll get covered by a, uh, a washer, but there are certain spots that it won't. So once I get to that point, I like to come from the front. I try not to push hard. I'll sometimes lead it sideways. Um, and work my way into getting it. We can always, because the epoxy is that easy to drill, finish it off um, just with your fingers, you know, just by twisting the bit in the hole. So there's that one. Now, I know you probably can't see, and what it is, it's a feel thing. I can feel it moving um, it moving in. I can feel it moving to the next step. So you can actually, with a step drill, feel each time it clicks down a layer. You know, so I'm on one layer there, and I know it went in one. And I don't want to drill... So there we go. I think I've got those all drilled pretty well. So I, if you notice, I try to pull my, uh, the curlies off of there. You want to get everything out. I have a little air gun that I use. And just some canned air. And then I just, I inspect. So this one needs more. And I'll do that one by hand. So let me dump this into the garbage so I'm not making to keep a little bit of it off of the work area. All right. So let's take a look. There we go. All right, it's looking pretty good. The, uh, the epoxy changed the ink a little bit, you know, give a little hollowness inside. I'm going to have to figure out exactly what I like to do. This is the first ever pedal I did with Sharpies. Um, I'm not sure how I like it. I didn't like the fact that I can't really erase all the pencil. because My pencil is a little heavy and it'll all come off. But I really, I like the way it looks I, because it's supposed to be grungy. He's not having a good time. He's, he's losing his shit. All right. So... At this point, we can do a test and we can see if all the pieces will fit. Um, I know that this one's not drilled out all the way. So one thing I can show you is this is easy to grip. And since I know it needs to go, there we go. Does it need to go all the way into that one? So there's the other thing I, you know, I was I was showing is that you can do your final cleaning by hand to make sure that they're at the level they're supposed to be, uh, that they're square. Because you want to make sure. 
There we go. That everything goes in, in place. So I'm going to give this one more good wipe. There we go. Um, when putting these back in, you want to be kind of careful because these do have the washers on them. And if you tilt it one way or the other, the washer is going to come off. I am not using the white washer in here anymore on the outside. So when I don't use it on the outside, I like using it on the inside to kind of lift it away. I might get told that that's actually wrong because I'd want to keep it there so that we have the metal contact, but I think it still contacts with the side. All right. All right, everything's going through. Well, even our even our red LED. All right. So once we have everything in there, I just got to get my hardware, and we can start putting it together. So the first thing I will do is I would like to get uh, the center here done. That way, it holds the pedal up. The tape's on so that I have some grip on these. Let me do, uh... I always have trouble with these because they're tiny and I've got fat, fat little fingers. Huh? I always... I usually try to get the switches in the center position. I find that's usually where I can, you know, easiest. So it's not pushing it off to the upper or lower part. Um, the ones that are just on ons aren't as easy to do. Um, because all my switches are not the same brand. Because I keep buying them from different places, wherever I happen to be ordering from at the time. Um, there's a slight difference in a couple of the nuts. I want to be a little more careful with this, that I don't do a lot of downforce because I don't want to do any scratching on the epoxy again. Um, I like to have all my switches, the nuts facing the same way. All right, it's not perfect, but it's getting there. Uh, let's see. The um, the three PDTs don't come with nice washers for the outside, and I don't like using just the nut. I like to have a washer underneath it. Um, so I got these nuts from. I uh, love my switches, and I really like the way those work. So we can get that on now. I always keep my, uh, the power nut is about the same size as the 3 PDT nut. So I actually typically um, keep the power one on the power. There we go. You get it. Nice. So let's finish off uh, potentiometers. Um, if you notice, I, I kind of rub my finger because I want the not sharp side down, which probably doesn't make sense from an aesthetic standpoint since it would probably look better with the nice and rounded side up but I also don't like the fact that if I have the sharp side down, it leaves circles on my finish. Um, I don't worry about these as much because they will be covered by um, 
they'll be covered by these, by the, the knobs. I do always turn them down one, one way. Now the first thing I put in is the power because I need to be able to tighten that. And I can't tighten it if the, uh, if the jacks run away because I, I, I kind of put them even so they're literally right on top of each other. But even if you put them with the standard holes um, for the for pedal PCB, it's going to be all the way at the bottom of this enclosure and you're not going to be able to really tighten it well. Um, I would like in the future to get a better hole size for those since I do feel like um, it's slightly large and I have to make sure it's perfectly centered or else it doesn't um, it doesn't cover the drill fully. And I like to make sure the drill holes are fully covered. All right, let's see. It's this one. Now, I stick my finger in here because that keeps it from rotating. So I don't want it to rotate too much because I don't want it to, to block. I make sure this is twisted a little before I plug it in. Um, these you can get off of Amazon. I've got a link to it. I'll have a link in the description on my site. Um, I really like them because it allows me to put the pedal together, take it apart, put it together, take it apart. And, and I like to be able to do that. Um, the cover's not here right now. And I will want to take a few pictures of the inside before I do that. But, uh, put our knobs on. Now, what I do with these knobs is I try to angle them I hold them in place with a finger and then I tighten them on. I try to make this pointing straight up. That's like my indicator of where I want the, the thing. I don't always get it exactly right. I don't worry about it because I never have everything dimed down to the bottom or everything dimed to the top. Uh, if I want it to be a little more retentive, you will say. See, like this one's a little over rotated and it's, it's a pain in the neck. So if you over rotate, I always go around again. So it's constantly pushing uh, the knob in that direction. So there you go. You see where we cut our highs, set our volume and our gain, cut all our switches where we want them, 412. Uh, I forget what this high and low is. I think that's the presence. This is whether it's modern and I don't remember what this one is. One's a bright, one's a presence. I don't remember which is which. And I just play with it, so it really doesn't matter. But there you go. There's our completed pedal. That's what it'll look like. Take it out, and you can see the surface is super shiny. And that's it. God, I love that. I can't wait to put this one on my board. All right. So this one is set. Um... to be done as well. So as I said, from the back, I go a little faster sometimes with these, but I'm very careful not to push at all for two reasons. So I can feel, and you might have been able to hear the kind of rattle when it hits the uh, when it hits the metal. Now I'm going fast because of the fact that uh, when I'm when I'm using it at a higher speed, I I have to put less force. Like I don't have to tell it to go down; it'll just start grabbing and you know pulling up. Well, not pulling up, but drilling through everything that we want to drill through. And this is why I need to get a hand back. All right, got to wipe this into the garbage as well. So 
sometimes it gets a little staticky too, which is not always the most fun to deal with. All right. So. Just canned air. That way I can wear it all. All right. I don't see it pulling up. That one's perfect. These two need to be drilled out a little more. So does that one. And the stomp. So the stomp I'll do with the power. There we go. And I'm going to take it off and use the rest of it by hand. So I feel like the stomp is good. These all need one more layer. There you go, you, you heard it pop in. And then I can just do that to make sure it's there. And the reason why I do this by hand is because I really don't want to. Um, there you go, popped in. Just bring it around by hand. So I know I've got the full thing off. Um, as I was saying, the reason why I, I like to do the last one by hand is one is I'm not strong enough to cut the metal using my fingers. Um, and I know exactly when it's gotten through, so I'm not actually, you know, digging the little bevel on the outer edge. Um, sometimes I get a better uh, cut for making sure we're nice and level. So that is actually done. I will... I blow it out before I put the put it back together. So we're finished. We got nice holes on all of those. Uh, we'll make sure this knows we want to do the pedal. No. Um, here, I think you can see. Oh yeah. See, I got a, I got a big drip or or something on there. So you can see there are little spots every here and there. That's a big one. In fact, I think that might be a little bug. He'll be a sacrifice. He's part of the artwork now. And as you can see a little bit on the edge, let me see if I can show it. Oh, it's not showing. Um, this edge right here. Oh yeah, you can. You know, it's not perfectly smooth. So I could have done a little more, but then I would have gotten dripping. Um, sometimes you get that happening where like, this will have a lot in drip. This will not be perfectly smooth because it pulled up a little bit. So there's a really fine balance. So this one had a little less on it. So it's not super smooth on the edge because it's, you know, didn't have a chance to roll over at all. Um, this one here is a little janky on the top, but it dripped on the bottom, which means it was at a very slight angle, you know, when it was in there, which means that the, the epoxy was flowing down towards the bottom. And I had to keep doing the bottom. So that's why when it's curing, you know, half hour like that, half hour like that, you know, so I, I try to keep turning them on whatever surface they're on so that, um, so that hopefully it gets to flow around the whole thing. And that by the time it sets to the point where it won't flow anymore, we're not having any of that movement happening. All right. So this one's a little bit different. Um, Most of them, I just stick something right in because this I am actually using a bevel for the LED. We need to put the bevel in first. And I don't know if I want this silver bevel anymore. And actually, that lock washer goes on the inside. Though I believe my, my plastic actually... Huh, 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 so much to think about. Actually, I don't want it to be silver anymore. So we're gonna go grab a black one. But I gotta go grab my bevel tray, which is on the other side. 
and we'll stop and come back. All right. I was wrong. I do not see anything else. It does not mean I don't have them. It just means that I don't know what I did with them. But we're gonna we're gonna go with this over. I would really like to get these, but they do work a little bit different. You see, they got the little black plug in them. I don't know if you can even see it. It's so close up, uh, but it's got much nicer edges. It's a nice little surround. So these are my three millimeter for like LFO indicators and whatnot, but you can make a nice black one as well. And I don't think I want to do Let me take a look. No, I don't think I want to just do that. I want one metal. All right. So we'll get that done. Uh, so, let's unscrew this. Takes me a second. Fat fingers at all. Put that in. Let's turn it over, get the washer on. Struggle with the nut because it's not easy getting giant fingers close to things. One inside of big spaces. Um, there's another one that's a slightly different size. So that's why I'm using one of those. <laughs> Excuse me. All right. So we've got our our LED uh, bezel on there. And now we can really just wipe it off and stick the circuit in. Um, so again, um, let's see, planned it in the first place. And no, all right. So as I was saying, Again, we have to get our washers on, and that's it. Um, let's unplug our power, since that goes on later. Um, we can now stick these through. I try to get, all right, so because this is on a nice size cord, we can actually pull that back out of the way. I like to route my, uh, my wires up under the PCB so they're not showing. Um, sometimes you gotta give these a little nudge. And then because I can't see what's going on in there, I like to just get something on. Good job seeing anything today. I don't know what I did with my washers. Oh, there you go. That's easy enough. All right. So, let's stick our washer on. So it's nicer from the other direction. That can be seen. There we go. Yeah. Sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to get your fingers up inside, pushing from the bottom in order to get things to 
stick out as far as you want. Um, so those are all on now. So this is one of the reasons why like the UV printing makes everything so much easier because this has been a week um, or more of prep for this. So figuring out what to draw is one thing, then you gotta do the drying. It usually takes about a day, you gotta let it dry. Once it's dry, I stick it in the oven, gotta bake it. Um, after it's baked, you have to do the epoxy. The epoxy is a two, three day process. Then you can finally go and do it. So it's not something, I mean, you, I could do the painting, the baking, and then the first layer of epoxy all in one day, but it's, it's, it's a lot of work and I typically don't. So I've been working on this, I think for a month or more, and it's been built for a couple of months now, but now I finally, I mean, it's all together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my LED in here. So you see, I have the, uh, the plastic plug already on there. All right, so now that's solid in. Um, I sometimes run these a little long when I'm gonna do it this way, just so that it, it adds the pressure. Um, sometimes I socket it again with something like this, like the power cord, so that I can actually uh, take the LED out and try different LEDs if I wanna try different ones. So let's get this in here. Oh, look at that. That one worked really nicely for me. That does not always happen. There you go. For those using a really nice Nutric Jacks, it's gotta be great because they're such, they're lower profile than this. These are actually, you know, probably a good half inch longer than they need to be. Um, the Nutrix have the, the stuff coming off the side, but then you can't put them as close together. So there's, there's hits and misses for everything. Um, sooner or later, I'll develop a board that I can just put everything on like people do. And I think I'm gonna just start drilling the hole to get to the, the board mounted, uh, DC jack. That way everything is from the inside. Um, and I don't have to worry about this situation, but I'm not quite there yet with my, my pedal building experience. One of the things I'm working on this weekend which isn't always the most fun thing, especially since it's beautiful sunny outside, is I need to, I need to make an order, which means I need to, um, I need to figure out what parts I need to order. And I've done, I have over a hundred pedal PCB boards. You see both of these pedal PCB. I really like his stuff. I like what he's been doing. Um, he's open for suggestions. I have asked him, um, I had suggested one day on the site to please, um, in the build docs, when you're doing the, the drill template, can you, can you label the spots? Because I, I don't know what things mean. This is, this is a perfect example. He tells me switch, 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 switch are these things. Doesn't tell me what's up and down. Doesn't tell me which is which. I don't have, um, a trace route of the board so I could look at the, uh, the schematic to see what's what. So it's it's not always the easiest labeling things. Um, and even though he told me it was volume, you know, um, the different things here, I can't tell. And if he, even when he goes in, if he says volume high cut gain, and they're all the same, like they're all B100Ks and there's nothing on the board that says which B100K, I, I just don't know. So I'm glad he did that. Like I said, he's open for suggestions. My latest suggestion would be 
in your build docs, I know you put C1 is this, C2 is this, C3 is this, but it would be nice to know that I need four 1N film capacitors. You know, it, it makes uh, ordering that much easier. Um, and I'm, I'm actually trying to put that together on my site for all the boards I build, just because I have such a struggle trying to um, order parts. I, I wanna start a, a part database, but, so this is done. This is ready for knobs. And I had knobs on this, but I don't think they go with our current art, so. Let me uh, tilt this up a little bit so it's not shining. Let me zoom in and we'll see if we can't figure out what we want to do. All right, so let's move this over. So as I've said, I really have this, I like to stuff as I'm looking for things that I need. And I've bought lots and lots of knobs. There's my knob collection. Isn't it beautiful? Look at them all. Oh, they're all over the place. So we want to find knobs that'll go with this. And I want, I think I originally had these on it, but I don't think the white goes with the aesthetic anymore. I just feel like I feel like that's a bit off. I don't think that quite looks right having all that lightness in there. Um, I wouldn't mind doing the black ones, but that may be the way we go. I don't know if I have, I don't think I have it. Nope, that's not the same. Nope, those don't have anything. So I only have one black one, so. No, I don't, I don't really like these. I don't like the silver. Maybe, maybe it's the, the old fashioned. That might be the way to go. Just plain black Davis knobs. Hmm. What other solutions? So that's the Davis. These are small, but maybe the medium. You know what? I think that might be it. If I have three of them, I'll just do the medium MXR knobs. Yep, there we go. That's our pedal. I like that. So there you go. That's that's what I go through. Sometimes I have an idea in mind. Sometimes I have no idea at all. Um, sometimes it goes through different iterations depending on what I'm what I'm doing. So you know, these two I think came out really well. I really like them. Um, I'll show you the rest too, just so you can get an idea. So there's our Westwood and our Ra, which I think you call the Prince Albert. Uh, this is the Depths, which I think is the Abyss and the uh, Wampler Pinnacle, which you call the Pineapple. This is uh, my own creation. This is the board that I uh, I did with a CNC machine that is the Distortion Plus, but it sounds very fuzzy with what I have in it, so I call it the Fuzztortion Plus. I made a fuzzy little count pillar. This is the uh, Symbolic Overdrive, which is a copy of the symbol, um, the what Mad Professor symbol. And I like this symbol, so I call it the symbol. This is my play. On, on what he has. And of course, this here is the uh, current lever from Mad Bean Pedals. 
which is a copy of the EHX uh, Electric Misters. I really like this one too. So there you go. There is uh, creating your pedals. I need to go and find uh, set screws because they're all missing uh, so that I could get those screwed on. But that's the way they look. I hope you enjoy. Hope it was informative. Have a good day.